Hi guys, welcome. If you're new here, my name's Nikki. I'm a beekeeper and I make beekeeping videos. If that's something you like watching, then hit the subscribe button. If you're one of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and listening to what I have to say. I really appreciate it. We have finished our spring nectar flow here where I live and in our, in our period of dearth, I have pulled all of my honey supers to get ready to extract. So I thought I'd make a quick video that's kind of geared toward my new beekeepers or people who are interested in beekeeping and talk a little bit about when uh, you should extract your honey. Now I know I have gone over this multiple times on my channel, but I think uh, you may not have watched this video. So let's talk a little bit about how the bees make the honey and that'll help us in the process of knowing when to take it for extraction. So bees collect nectar from plants and then we'll take that nectar, combine it with enzymes within their bodies, and then they will store that nectar inside cells in the honeycomb that they've built. Once that nectar has been stored, they will begin a process of evaporating the moisture content out of it and turning it into honey. That's a really quick overview of how it's made. Once that's done and they've got to the exact consistency that they want and they have honey, they will then start a process of capping that over. They will completely seal those frames with a coat of beeswax and that preserves the honey so they can save it for themselves to consume, save it for winter, or if they make a surplus, us beekeepers can go in and remove that and use it for our own consumption. Now there are specific tools that beekeepers can use to help them test their honey for the exact moisture content. I don't use those, but you're welcome to if you'd like. I will try to find an example of those and link them down in the description below so you can check out what they are and give you an idea. Now, none of those will be sponsored. Again, I, I don't use those tools, but you're, uh, feel free to research them. And if you decide you'd like to, uh, go ahead and try them. I, I know people that do and they really uh, love using them. Now, first we'll talk about the times of year you wanna take your supers off. Um, I have two nectar flows or two major nectar flows where I live. I have a spring and a fall and a period in between where there's not a lot of stuff blooming for the bees and they kind of go into um, a phase where they're not really producing a lot of honey. So I take my honey supers off at the end of each nectar flow. So at the end of my spring flow and at the end of my fall flow, I will remove my supers. When I do that, I make sure the bees have enough honey to use for themselves, and I will also supplement in between those periods where they don't have a super on. Um, I know some beekeepers who like to just leave their supers on. They'll leave it on through spring, summer, and remove it in the fall. If you're going to do that, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but just I'd recommend that you pull them off before winter. It is really difficult to extract honey that's been um, kind of subjected to colder temperatures. It can crystallize a lot of times and you really shouldn't be getting into your hives in the winter as absolutely any more than necessary. Um, so I wouldn't recommend removing them in the winter. Also, typically what's left in the hive or on the hive in the winter is really for the bees to consume. And so they will have a tendency sometimes to go and start to remove that honey from those top supers and store it back down in the deep. You'll see this in your bees throughout the entire year. They like to do housekeeping and move stuff around in the hive. So if you've left a super on and either forgotten to take it off or really didn't intend to take it off until winter, you might be surprised when you go back in that you don't have the same amount of honey in that super as there was when you left it on there. Now that we talked about the times of year when you should pull your supers off, I did bring some frames out with me. Oh, this is Kiwi, by the way. She's my beekeeping cat. She's always out here with me. Anywhere I go, she's with me. Um, but I have pulled some frames to just show you what a frame of capped honey is gonna look like when you want to pull it off and you want to extract it. Now, as I said, the bees will completely cap over that frame of honey with wax, and um, that's when you know that the honey is good to extract. You're not always gonna have frames that are 100% extract. I'll show you what they look like, though. So here I have a frame of honey. This honey has been cured, which means they've pulled the moisture content out of the nectar and turned it into honey. This frame has been completely capped over. It's actually drawn out pretty far. This is a decently heavy uh, frame of capped honey. So you can see here, this one's completely capped. It is ready to extract as it is. Now, unfortunately, you're not always gonna be that lucky and you're not always gonna come in and have a super that 
has frames that are completely 100% capped. So a good rule with them is that you want your frames to be at least 80% capped over. So this frame, for example, you can see here, we've got some cells that aren't capped, but we're definitely within the 80%. But if we look at the back side of this frame, that is not the case. We have a lot of cells that have uh, contents in them and are not capped over. Um, so following the 80% rule, we would not extract this frame. However, another way you can tell is there is a possibility that your frame of honey has been completely cured. It's at the correct moisture content, but the bees haven't gotten an opportunity to cap that over yet. And how to tell if that's the case is, I take your frame that has the uncapped cells, I tip it upside down so it's facing the ground, and give it kind of a gentle shake. And watch to see if any of the liquid comes out. Nothing is dripping out of these cells, which is a good indication that this honey's probably been cured and it's okay to extract. Now, if you do that and you shake the cells and you see the honey dripping out of the cells that's not actually honey that's still nectar and it does not have the appropriate uh, moisture content to be extracted so if we were to extract a frame that still has nectar in it or a significant amount of nectar it's going to add too much water content or moisture content to the honey it's gonna cause our honey to ferment and spoil. So if you see that, do not extract those um, and combine with honey that you're going to consume. It is okay to sometimes extract frames of ne just nectar to give back to your bees. Uh, we do that in some cases, especially if you've got um, bees that have backfilled and your hive is honey bound. So there are cases or instances where you are gonna extract nectar to give back to your bees, but definitely not going to use that for our consumption. So those are a couple good ways to determine whether or not your honey is ready to extract um, without using any kind of specialized tools to test the honey itself. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I say this all the time, but I always forget to add something when I'm filming this video. If you have any specific tips or tricks on when you uh, pull your supers off or how and when you extract your honey, please also leave them down in the comment section below. I love a good dialogue and I love to learn from each other. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. As always, I appreciate you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.